Then we have our advisory board. Guys, a quick and dirty on this is as an executive committee member, you run a small business. Your organization is a small business. You run the business well, you collect the dues, you recruit the men, you run your, your operation efficiently, you get to have fun with other and all the other things that go along with the chapter struggle when they don't run their business well. These guys help you to do those things. They advise you on those many areas. Uh, we sum it up here in these three different things. So when we first start doing this, we draw a square or a diamond and say, okay, take all these and put one in the corner, as long as the chapter and the association and the, and the advisory board and the upper we communicate. It's our goal to keep, keep in touch things going well. But we kind of turn that around to because again, the, the returning experience is all about you. And these different alumni areas are here to support you. I'm not here to continue my returning experience. I'm here to help you have the same returning experience as that. And so all these different things support. We go direct from the chapter into the alumni association in the Black Country Talent Pool. And then from there, if you want to get involved outside of that, it's the House Corporation and the Alumni Advisory Board. Uh, for those of you in the room who want to talk more about advisory boards, Nevin gave a presentation last night. He's giving one again tomorrow afternoon in our hot topics, at our first hot topic session. And it's stuff called What Can My Advisor Do for You? And that's when we really get into uh, what advisory boards do. So if you want to talk more about that, mark that on your uh, on your agenda. Okay, back into alumni relations. Four things that you need to do, and you, this is the rest of this guy's is tactical. This is how you communicate with your alumni. This is how you work with your alumni association to communicate with your alumni. There are four areas of concentration. Identifying your alumni, communicating with them, cultivating them, and then soliciting them. We talked about the beginning, you want certain things from your alumni, and it varies, so that's the solicit part of it. So we're gonna break this down step by step. In your binders, you'll see if you have the printout of these slides, if you want to make notes as we go, please, uh, please feel free to do so. The first area is you have to identify your alumni. You have to know who they are and where they are. So that, that's it's, it's a big guess. You and your alumni association have to maintain the database. How many of you guys have a chapter database of alumni right now? Okay. I know one of the guys' questions was, you know, we're trying to, to be able to get there. If you currently have a database, your goal is to through identifying your alumni to continue to try to find them off online. I'm sure in your database you have guys without email addresses. Or you send out an email and you get 20 to 30 contacts, right? Yep. Your goal is to enrich that database. We, we do it all the time you know, through the, uh, the headquarters. If you don't have a database, the first thing you can do, call me. I'll give you a database. I know, I have a record of every alumni starting with Gregory Southgate Taylor. 0010001. That's Freddie T. Alright? Goes all the way up to the guy that just got initiated last week. We have that record. We need to work together to, to enrich that. So it's finding those lost alumni. Um, for those of you guys that do have alumni association, there, there's really probably three databases floating out there. We have the International Attorneys Database, you probably have your Chapters Database, and then the Alumni Association has database. Guys, we need to sync those up. Let me house your data. When you get an alumni update, send it to me, send it to Nevin. We will put it in our database and we will archive it for you. Think of it this way. Instead of you maintaining it, it's an Excel sheet, isn't it? Yeah, that database. How about instead of you having to, when you get the update, you get the business card, instead of having to go in and type in yourself, you just forward it to me. And I put it in the database. Wherever you send out your mailing, you say, Ben, I need my alumni list. Boom, sell spreadsheet. That'd be like, Let's sync up. If you have your database, send it to me. We want to, we want to compare the data. We want to make sure we have accurate data on our alumni. So I would get all communicate with them together. First step is to identify your alumni. Again, a couple different areas. Guys, through your dashboard and through your white kite solution, we want you to continue to use that after you graduate. You use it now to pay your bills and hopefully you get the, the, the polls and the calendar and, and all those features in your white kite account in your, your chapter dashboard. Um, drive alumni to because what happens is the minute that they go and they sign on, you're updating the fraternity database. When you create your login info, when a new member goes in and puts information in, we're making that record. So the more people that we can drive to my fight, it automatically updates the database. Yeah. Does, do a lot of 
Yes, any alum can, and that's why I say put on your newsletter, drive them there. Because for you, if you send out a newsletter that says update your information, or you have like a little cutout at the corner where you can cut out and send it back, again, you don't have to then put it into your database. Instead, say go to my bank, create your account, that's how you update your info. Because they go, they sign in, they cross reference the number, and they will their initiation number and that address. And it basically says, is this correct? So continue to use that, drive them there. Every time you send out a communication, guys, ask for an update. When I do alumni recruitment, I have a sign-in sheet, and I get the guy's name, phone number, address, email address. I already have his email address because I email him if he showed up because he got an email, but I always want to verify. Everything that I do, everything that you do, you always ask for an address and we'll get that thing in front of them. Finally, you know, you do sign-in sheets. How many of you guys have a Facebook page, Twitter account? You know, we talk about doing a phone to try to you know, find those lost alumni. What if you just do a blast? Records update. Alumni challenge. How many guys can we get to uh, respond back with their email address? Use your social media as an opportunity to, uh, to reach out to your alumni because whether you know it or not, they're watching. Because they want to see what is going on. Okay? So that's identifying your alumni. Having the database, syncing up with the international fraternity, let me archive the records for you. Drive your alumni to my pipe or get the updates that way, and then you know, find ways to find them to obtain records for your lost mom. Any questions about that first step? All right, section two is to communicate with them. That's newsletters. It's emails, newsletters, and social media. It's a combination of all three things. It's a communication plan. Be thorough and personal, there's a variety of means of contact, and send invitations to all your events. So again, you've got a five year, it's newsletters, it's your website, and it's social media. It's all of them. It's not just Facebook. It's not just MailChimp. It's a combination of all three things. And the main, the backbone, or the foundation of your alumni communications has to be a newsletter. Guys, you said you want something from your alumni. Why guess you need money? Or you want money from them? You gotta spend money to make money. Remember that edge? have to invest in your alumni relations program. As you go through your budgeting process this fall, if you're not mailing a physical newsletter, you have to budget for it. And it's expensive. It's 50 cents an hour, because it's like 45, 50, whatever it is, I mean, it's expensive. To print an all newsletter, to mail it to them. Do that at least twice a year. From there, guys, the newsletter says, here's what's going on this semester. Then you use the email blast say, Reminder of homecoming within three months. And then you use social media, Twitter, Facebook to say, guys, only three days left, or you know, just announced international president Matt Dwarf will be at use the, the multiple means to communicate with your alumni. Newsletters twice a year, 80-20 rule. They want to hear that you're good. Beyond that, that they really don't care. They want to hear about other alumni. 80% of alumni news, 20% chapter news. Uh, paper and electronic, so again, have that budget. And when you do the electronic news, find a template that works for you and just keep using it. If you go onto the attorney's website under our media resources, we have a MailChimp template. MailChimp's a free newsletter service account for constant contact. You can send out newsletters that way, and it's a pipe garden little template that just true created, and you can go on and implement that. So with your newsletters, your evenings, e-newsletters, have a template, and keep the same. Build your brand. Question always comes up to me is, okay, so what, what that 80% of loan news, what do we put in there? There's a list of things up here, I'm not just going to cover that right now, but as you take a look at that, um, I was at a conference last year and someone was talking to us about everything you know, social media and electronic either you know, papers are dead, papers are not dead, newsletters are not dead. Uh, they, they threw us some data that said things on average a person has 150 Facebook friends. How many of you guys have more than 150 Facebook friends? Yeah, okay. So on average we have 150 Facebook friends. And every one of those people twice a week update their status, you are getting 300 pieces of media in your face that you are processing very, very quickly. So how much of that is sticking? Not very much. 
They say the average person gets 100 emails a week. I know I get about 100. <coughs> um, so you, I'm, I'm cruising through them. Like I go on my phone, I deleted five before I got in the room. You think that I just don't need on my phone? Click, 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 gone. Okay? I'm going through it very fast. They say that the average person gets four pieces of legitimate mail a week. Four. It's not a shopper, it's not anything else. So if you're going to pick 300, 100, or four, where are you going to place your property in PC? Where? Newsletter, right? Color newsletter, in their mailbox. The other thing that says it's off. You got about 30 seconds. Average. So the email, they're, gonna, they're probably going to view it in the, uh, the preview mode, they're going to delete it. You at least got 30 seconds. They're going to open it, flip through. All right, that was cool. And then they're going to set it in their bathroom or on the that line you put your information when you go online and you can see it. But by all means do not get away from social media. I think we've hit on this multiple times. David Greenberg, I think, is on that. I think it's more of a dad than talking about how much the Facebook's bad and you should be smart. Use your Facebook page if you're only to your advantage. You know, if you're going to use Facebook to announce online events, obviously they don't want to see the pictures of you guys at the party, so keep in mind who your viewer is. But the other thing to do too is um, you know, have a moment I post, find an open deposit, find a little picture on the chat house, scan them, upload them, take a picture of them, put them on Facebook. Nostalgia. That guy's going to see it. I uh, was in the headquarters, I think it was last year, and we were doing consultant training, and uh, one of the guys had a bunch of old boxes of alumni newsletters. And I found one from my chat, and it was from 1982. I opened it up. I recognize a few people in there. One of the guys, he uh, works here in Memphis. So I ordered the scan, and I scanned it. I put it on my Facebook page and I said, Hey Scott, recognize this guy? It's the composite from Bike Chapter 1982. And he's like, Oh my God, this is awesome. So many memories coming on it right away. Then he started tagging people. There's a 100 man chat, and before you know it, there are 100 people tagged on that. And it goes right back to my Facebook profile. Think about if you do that with your chapters. Put an open files up there, tag one guy, watch it spread like wildfire. Build that So That's communicating with your alumni, guys. Newsletters, have a budget, you have to invest in them, mail off this newsletter. Any questions? Okay, the third area is to cultivate them. It's alumni events. You have to have events. With events, it's the quality of the event, not the quantity of the event. A couple things come to play. Uh, plan them well in advance. When I, I spend the majority of my time working with alumni, training alumni, training volunteers. We, we give basically a, a similar version of this presentation that's geared at them. What your alumni association should be doing. They should be doing these, these same four things, okay? We all do the same thing, we all win. When I ask them, what's the biggest problem with chapter events? What do you think they tell me? Not enough time. Yeah. I got an email the week of. I'm not going to book a plane ticket or, you know, I'm too busy. Guys, my, my personal calendar, I'm 30 years old and I'm not that old to me. I'm not that old. My weekends, my calendar is booked till Christmas. I know what I'm doing every weekend. It is August 2nd. For the next six months, I know what I'm doing. I know the trips I'm taking for work. I know what I'm doing on those weekends. You want to get on my calendar for a holiday open house at the bike house? You're too late. Send it out as quickly as you can. You don't have to have all the details. Save the date. You know, right now, Founders Day, March 1st, or whatever you know, day Saturday falls on this year. If you're going to do a Founders Day banquet, send out a save the date now. Details to follow. Get on the calendar as quickly as possible. Uh, a couple things that. Uh, we point out this is actually on the, uh, yeah, it's on the next slide. Again, chapter newsletters, chapter events are the same thing as alumni newsletters and alumni events. Your chapter, what's, what's your chapter designation? Better. Okay, so the Zeta Alpha B. Zeta Alpha B. So Zeta Alpha B is Zeta Alpha B. The alumni association and the chapter need to be synced up. There needs to be one publication, not two. It doesn't need to be chapter events and alumni events. There are only alumni events. 
They're playing by the alumni association. Let the alumni association coordinate your newsletters. Take a big burden off of that. How about instead of you paying for it, you just coordinate with the alumni association and they pay for it and they send it out. That's a good way to do it, right? Coordinate, yeah. What I would say to coordinate your event them is once a year, hopefully they have a planning meeting, attend that with them. Your alumni relations chairman should be the liaison to the alumni association. Make sense? He goes to the meeting and they say, okay, what kind of events do you want to do this year? Father's Day and Coast Guard. Chapter then says, okay, how can we help you with that? And you talk about it. That, that's coordinating it. And with the newsletter, the 80 20 rule, let the alumni find the 80% of alumni news. Your job is to get an update on the chapter. They want to see behind their wins. They want to get a nice roof shot of you guys at Pike University or at Formal. Would you take a picture before the day starts, before the day starts, the time is so long? Let's always do it before. Um, they want to see a nice picture. They want to see an update from the SD. That's the 20%. So that's what I'm doing by boarding the field. Uh, this is kind of a side note, this third one, but got them. people show up to the Pike House, have a plan. That old guy shows up to your front door and rings the doorbell randomly. And how many guys have that ever happened to you? You kind of open the door and it's like, oh, hey man, what, uh, what's going on? What brings you around? Kill it. Have a plan. Teacher chapter. Open up the door. Welcome. My name's Ben. What's your name? Okay. Are you an alum? Yes. When were you reading the chapter? 1975. Great. Can I give you a tour of the house? What brings you by? It likely took that alum a lot of courage to build up to be able to come back and bring that door up. He's more afraid of you than you are of him. That guy could be freaking loaded. David Greenberg, you know what I'm he filled up the I want to volunteer tab online. We didn't find him, he found us. And we had a plan. I got him like, wait a minute, this guy's bigger than just being the next chapter of Roger Tell him he to be And he needs to come by university school forward and on. When that alum shows up, you know, he could be a big prominent alum and you don't know it. Shake his hand, give him to a week before you have one shot. It's recruitment. Everybody should have a plan when he shows up, give him a tour, let him be on his way. Yeah, I've been to the house since graduated 20, 30 years ago. And quality of alumni events, not quantity. If you're having a monthly alumni event, fail. Once a semester, two a year, max. And then you spend your time planning for those many events. I want to be in the one thing, the one that's top five. Family, career, faith, hobbies, and life about. I want to make this top five. And if I can get in twice a year, more than likely once a year, Quality, not quality. The recruitment guys are probably going to take a couple of years, but you should get your next time. All right, things to do. Uh, coordinate your calendar, university calendar. How many of you guys check the school's football team? Well, I'm not going to the football game, right? That's what you should be having your pipe bets. You know, your pipe bets aren't all pipe all the time. When they come back to the football game, open house, brunch on Sunday, tailgate. Golf tournament on Friday. You know, coordinate with, with the university is putting a lot of money to bring alumni back to campus. Leverage that with your events. Coordinate with the university calendar. Minimum six months in advance. Set the date to get the information out to them. And then uh, minimum two months out. Include uh, set up the RSVP form, collect the you know, who's going to come, the attendance, to sign up, all that. Again, you should use your, your different forms of communication, your newsletter. Your Guys, make sure the chat house is clean. It smells. The beer cans around. The guy's gonna probably bring his wife or his kid. My dad's a bike. I have vivid memories of what the bike house looked like. The one that I had to live in for four years. I remember saying, I will never live in the ship. That was over four damn years. So it makes it makes an impression on me. I still remember the smell. All right, and follow up, send thank you cards, wrap ups, save the date for the next event. Make sure that you thank them for coming. Make sure that you recognize that they spent a lot of effort to be there and you recognize that. So, follow up after. Any questions about alumni events?
Any of you guys are struggling with that? Yeah? You're a call number two, correct? Right? New, new chat. Guys, it is never too early to start opening your mind. The minute that you have your mom, you got to start keeping them engaged. And even if there's five, keep them engaged, invite them back to campus. Uh, you know, have a, a Founders Day banquet or plan a golf tournament and reach out to your young moms, but then also reach out to the area you know, whether you know, Whether you're in a rural area or you're in you know, downtown Boston, Massachusetts. Send out a message to area alone that they'll want to come out and meet like minded people. Um, you know, so, so keep it simple. One or two events a year, you know, plan a golf tournament in the spring, have a camp spent in the fall, and just basically come out together and tell your story. Here's how we're progressing. People are very interested in what you're doing. Anything else? Yeah. Um, we have a few guys trying to plan alumni golf. Okay. Can I ask one more question? Why do you think it's a good idea? 
why are parents, you said you don't know what parents are doing. I just don't know. Money can be a part of that, but it has to go for something. Alumni are just going to give you a check. Pike University. 
housing scholarships, a housing opportunity, some other tangible leadership opportunity they have to be able to, you know, to see. It. And again, I want to build houses. My goal is have a house. Well, Chapters don't build my house. I want to build my house. Your job is to build that alumni association. Identify your alums, communicate with them, cultivate them. Get the alumni involved, ask them for something. They're the ones that will come Did I miss anything on the, uh, the list? Other than this, uh, someone asked how to keep in touch with alumni that are coming like after five years in the early, early 30s. Sure. Guys, I would say we go back to the communicating thing. The minute that someone goes to an alumni ceremony or the minute that they graduate from college, give their alumni associate or excuse me, give their contact information to the alumni association. They will start communicating. Yeah. Uh, uh, like the I think it's a lot of work. I would say just have one. Again, I think the only difference is, is to me, the younger alumni still come with a lived college experience. They want to come hang out with your dates. Not a good idea. So uh, I would keep them together. Keep your alumni that short and sweet. You gotta have open house, you're gonna tailgate, and then you can go to the ball game. After that, you know, all bets are off. It's like it's like having the social events. You have the end time, so that way you're not lying to things after that. Same thing with clubs. You know, have the quick event. Get them out, get them together, give them, give them a chance to come together, they'll figure out the rest of them. So, you can try it, but you probably need to work with the I would say you this out. Any other questions? Yeah? How do you motivate each other to get out of the events sequence? Because you've only got, you know, five or six guys who are out on the whole lot doing this, and they're asking, yeah, just want to get there on Saturday and have to get them out of the event. Right. So, I ask them, so let's say we're doing the homecoming tailgate, right? Sure. So tailgates evolve, you know, your normal tailgate experience is probably different than what your alumni event tailgate experience is, right? A little bit more key sunlight involved. So the alumni event will bring career for both of us. I ask for one football game a year. Guys, put on the polo, put on the jeans. Choose not flip flops, come on, this alumni event. I want them once a year or after you come out and leave these alums. Tell them what you're trying to do. By having this alumni event, we're looking to do this. We're looking to raise this money. We're looking to help fund this project. If they have buy on what you're trying to do, they'll like the show. So again, you can check on what's going on. And again, the quality thing, not quality. Guys, we're asking for one thing a year. If you can't do that, we'll probably give you the LAR programs. Or we'll take some steps. Any other questions? How do you know if our how do you know if our area has an active alumni association? So you can call me, I have some cards here, I'll give you my card and I'll let you know. Uh, the other thing too, I didn't get it on the alumni association slide, but we categorize categorize alumni association in two areas, chapter based and area based. Did that hit on that a little bit? Yeah. So you know your chapter based are specific for your chapter <coughs> alumni. The area one, that's good networking opportunities for the alums. Good basic for especially if you have a young chapter, one of those area of online first. It's a good way to reach out. Uh, call me, shoot me an email, and I'll let you know. 631, I like it. Alright, guys, get out of here. Thanks.